A very good morning, everyone. Welcome to our tutorial class, and I hope that you are doing well. You're feeling fresh and energetic early in the morning. Uh, now for this class, we have allocated time for revision, as well as I had mentioned in our lecture class that we will use probably a bit of portion of, of our class to actually go and attempt one more exercise on playback analysis. Now, just before we actually go over it, some friendly and kind reminders. Please note that your weekly quiz, which contributes 10% towards your coursework, all the lecture-based quizzes, they basically close off on Sunday. Sunday, 31st October, 11.59 p.m. Moreover, your project is also due on Sunday, 11.59 p.m. So I hope that you have attempted all your lecture-based quizzes. Also, at the very same time, you are finishing up the work on your project. Now, please remember, there is no extension to deadlines to either of these assessments. Why? Because uh, your project was actually introduced to you in week three of the semester. Okay. And this is week 14, by the way. And your weekly quiz. I think you had more than enough time to complete your weekly quiz. In fact, last week I have dedicated uh, some time for you to go over it since you didn't have a lecture class, okay? So please get that sorted. Apart from that, your missed semester exam marks and your short tests, uh, which will be in next week, uh, which is allocated for next week, okay? Try to prepare uh, yourself for it very, very well. Now, Without further delay, is there any questions or any queries from anyone before we actually head off and try to work on payback analysis exercise three? Any questions, any queries from anyone? Nope. Okay. If no questions or no queries, let's go and work on this. Uh, just me let just let me implement this in here, so I can actually put in that the discount rate here is ten percent. Okay, now this is what we'll do. Now we have gone over these exercises in in the lecture class. Okay, you have gone over the payback analysis without discount and with discount rates. Now let's go in quickly, put this up on a spreadsheet. And from there onwards, we can actually go around and work on this, okay? So very, very quickly, I am opening up a spreadsheet. And there I am, okay? So from here, what I will do is, sorry, in here, what I'll do is I will go and feed in the values. So initial, initial cost is, what's the initial cost? $25,000. So initial cost is $25,000. You can do the same in a spreadsheet. And the discount rate is 10%. And what I'll do is I will copy the entire table in the spreadsheet. So here, you have inflows and then you have outflow. Inflow, uh, PV and cumulative, cumulative PV. Okay, let's adjust it. Now we need to ensure that there's no gaps in between the values. Now you do not have an outflow in here, you only have an inflow. So that makes your work a bit more easier, okay? So what I will ask you to do is, as soon as you're done with the table, I'll give you three minutes. Okay, take five minutes and try to find out what is the present value. Very quickly, everyone. So you're supposed to find the present value and the cumulative present value. Try to get that done and then I'll mark it up. You have five minutes with you.
Those of you who have just joined us, please note that we are working on payback analysis exercise three. So you have the initial cost, you have the discount rate given in, you are supposed to go and find out the present value of the inflows. So very quickly, get that done. You have five minutes with you. Please ensure when you're placing in your formulas in Microsoft Excel, you are using your brackets very, very carefully. Brackets play a key role in Excel formulas. Otherwise, you will have incorrect values given in. Okay, you have one more minute, people. All right, let's mark this up. So to actually find your present value, okay, uh, pardon me, is there someone who needs more time with this? Is there anyone who needs more time with this? No, okay, if not, so let's continue. 
So to find the present value, the general formula is you have the cash flow divided by open bracket one plus the rate to the power of time. Okay. So let me repeat that. The cash flow divided by open bracket one plus rate close the bracket to the power of time. So therefore, in this case, our inflow is or cash flow is zero divided by, so I have double open brackets. So one plus the rate is 0.1%. So 0 0.1, close the bracket to the power of time, which is zero in this case, and then close the bracket, enter. So your present value for year zero is zero because you do not have any inflow. After that, what you can do is you can find the precision point and drag it down. Now you have to be very careful in this case. When you find the precision point and drag it down, you need to ensure that two of the values they change. For example, this is B6 and A6 for your year zero, okay? Remember B6 and A6. So over here, it needs to change to B7 and A7. And then B8, A8, B9, A9, B10, A10, and B11, and A11. So at the moment, we have those accordingly. That means whatever you have done, you have done it correctly. Have it in two decimal places, the home tab, number group, and home tab number group and within the number group you have the decrease decimal button so when you click on the decrease decimal button what you notice is that the entire value basically they come in two decimal places now please cross check your answers check to see that you have done it correctly also check the formulas the allocation of brackets now be very be very careful when you are inserting into the power sign remember it's shift key and six numerical button from the keyboard so that will give you a power sign and in that case if you have that so these are your answers so what i would like you to do next is cross check your answers two minutes for that and after that have the next five minutes to check your cumulative present to get your cumulative present value done so you have seven minutes in total thank you
And at the same time, if you're facing any issues, do let me know. For your cumulative present value, okay, you won't be able to find the precision point and pull it down. You'll have to manually enter the formulas. So uh, please ensure that you're doing it accurately. Take a bit of time, but learn the basics very, very well. Okay, one more minute left, and then we will go and mark this up. All right, let's go and mark this up. So is there anyone who needs more time? Uh, Janesh, Monish, Musharat, are you three doing well? Do you have any questions or any queries so far? No, sir. No, sir. Musharat, how about you? I'm okay, sir. Thank you for your feedback. Okay, so let's go and mark this up. So to find the cumulative value, this is pretty simple, right? So it's just what you have to do is you have to add the present value with the previous cumulative present value. So for year zero, we do not have a previous cumulative present value. So we'll just add up the present value. So that gives you a value of zero. Next up for year one, to find the cumulative present value. So the previous cumulative present value plus the present value would give you the answer as such. Next up, to find the cumulative present value for year two. So cumulative present value for year one plus the present value for year two. So this is your value. Next up, to find the cumulative present value for year three. So cumulative present value for year two plus the present value of year three will give you the value as such. Next up, to find the cumulative present value for year four. So cumulative present value of year three plus the present value of year four gives you this value. And then finally, to find out the cumulative present value for year five, you have cumulative present value for year four plus the present value for year five, which gives your value as such. So this is your 
very final figure. That means this is the total benefits that would be derived from the uh, entire investment of the information system. Now, is there any queries or do you have a different answer? You are not satisfied with the answer that we have up on the screen. You're most welcome to speak and I'm most welcome and I'm sorry, and I will be most happy to hear you speak your concerns. Different answer, anyone? No? Okay, if no different answer, all right, take the next 30 minutes and try to find out what is the net present value. Next three minutes, people. One more minute to go. All right, let's go and get this done. So to find the net present value, what you have to do is you have to, first of all, calculate your total inflow. And from the total inflow, you will subtract your total outflow. So from the amount of work that we have done so far, we come to know that our total inflow for the five year lifespan of the information system is $28,189.52. So what is our total outflow? Now with the information that has been given so far, our total outflow is, is what? Anyone? What is the total outflow in this case? Janesh, would you like to answer that? What is the total outflow in this case? Uh, zero outflow. Come again, Janesh. Zero. Total outflow is zero. Okay. Musharat, what is the total outflow? Thank you, Janesh, for your attempt. So is it the only the initial cost? Okay. Thank you for your attempt. Monish, what do you think? Uh, initial cost. Okay, thank you for your attempt, uh, all three of you. Okay, so, so far we have very limited information on the outflow. So apart from the initial cost, there is zero information on the outflow of cash.
So therefore, what we'll do is in terms of calculating your net present value, whereby the formula is inflow minus outflow. Okay, so inflow is $28,189.52 minus the initial cost. Remember, that is also outflow. Outflow is whatever money is existing, is existing, sorry, exiting the organization. So that's $25,000. So to find the net present value, that's pretty simple. Equals to, I will click on, click on the cell reference, which is D11, D11 here and minus it by 25,000, click on the cell reference B1. So that's your total value, 3189.52. So that is your net present value. So with the information that is provided with the net present value, what are some of the conclusions that you can make? Is there any form of conclusion that you could make with the net present value? Okay. This so far, there's two conclusions rather that you could clearly make. First of all, is that, okay, by the end of the fifth year, you are getting a profit of 3189.52. Remember, this is by the end of the fifth year then. Another conclusion you can make is that the investment that has been done on the system, it is profitable. Okay, you're getting a positive value, so that's profitable. Okay, that means you're getting your returns. All right, everyone. Okay, now what I would like you to like you to do is, can you take about five minutes and find out the ROI, return on investment? Make sure again here, you have to use your formulas very, very accurately. And at the same time, you need to ensure that you're placing in the commerce properly as well. Okay, you have five minutes with you.
Okay, anyone needs more time to get that done? No? Okay, let's work this out. So to find the return on investment, okay, so what you need to do is, first of all, you need to go and find out your net present value. That means the selling price, or in this case, you have the uh, inflow, total inflow, and then the total outflow, and then you will divide by total outflow, multiply by 100 upon one. So it becomes simple when you have the net present value. So net present value divided by the total cost multiplied by 100 upon one. So you can use either of the formulas. So I will use the long version so that it makes it easy for you to know it later. So I have double open brackets, okay? So 28,189.52 minus the initial costs and then close the bracket. After that, divide by the initial cost, close the bracket, multiply by 100. So 12.76% would be my return on investment per cent. And likewise, if you're just trying and using the net present value figure, so 3189.52 and then divide by 25,000, multiply by 100, gives you the same value, it does, okay? There you go. All good, everyone? Okay, now next, can you go and find out the payback analysis? You have five minutes to do that. Payback analysis, you have five minutes to do that. This might take you some time. I guess this is the most difficult thing in the entire payback analysis calculation, payback period. And sure to take time to take enough prime and try to get this correctly. Try to get this done correctly this time, eh?
All right, let's go and calculate the payback analysis. So we'll write down the, we'll write down the answer just in here and the calculation, we can do it on the other side. So what are your two comparison is? So the comparison is in this case, first of all, you'll have a look at what is your initial cost or your total outflow, just in case if the example has both uh, inflows and outflows, okay? So over here, you just have an initial cost. So the initial cost is $25,000. So $25,000 basically comes between year three and year four. So somewhere here in the middle, three years and something, something months, that's where you get total return, okay? So to do that, what we'll do is, first of all, we'll put down the years that we're comparing. So we are comparing years three and year four. So year three, the total value that you had was this. And year four, this was the value that you have obtained. Now, do notice is that your initial costs is $25,000, okay? So let's go and compare the amount that you are lacking, okay? So 25 minus the value for year three inflow. So in this case, the difference is, is equal to 25,000, minus 19,496.62. So we get a total value of 5503.38. So this is the difference between 25,000 and 19,496 dollars 62 cents. All right, now once you have that, then you'll go and find out the difference between these two values. And as we know by now, the difference is this, the present value for year four. But if you'd like to, you can even go and calculate. So is equals to year four value minus the year three value, same amount? Yep, same amount. Now in here, this is what you might need to do next. To actually go and find out the months. So you will do equals to the difference of the initial cost and year three value to the power of the difference uh, in terms of the total info value for year three and year four multiply by 12. Why 12? So we want to get the monthly values. That means how many months is the difference. So your value will not be in dollar signs in here. Okay. Now I'll need to remove the dollar sign from all of them. Uh, this would be just a plain number. Okay. So 9.6 months. Now, if you'd like to go and cross check, you can always go and do this. Okay, so if you like to cross check equals to, you have 6830.13, that's the total income or the inflow for year four. And then you divide it by 12 months. So you get your value as 569 something, okay? So equals to 569.18 multiply by 9.67, you get your value as 5503.38. So this is also equals to that. So that means your answer here is correct. So your total payback period, so you have 9.67 months and then three years in here. So three years and 9.67 months is your payback period. Now, is there any confusion? Is there any clashes in terms of answers that we have? No, if not, can we go and quickly find out what is the return of investment after selling? So this is pretty simple. The price at which the system is going to be sold is $30,000. So we want to find out what is a return on investment. That means how much extra money he's, uh, or the organization is earning in terms of percentages. So first of all, over here, we need to do something as this. So the formula changes because it's selling. So selling price minus cost price, and then over cost price, multiply by, 100. Why multiply by 100? Because you're finding a rate of investment. 
So in this case, equals to double bracket. So your value, selling value is 30,000 minus the cost price, which is 25,000. And then close the bracket divided by, again, 25,000. That is a cost price. Close the bracket, multiply by 100. That gives you a value of 20% as your return on investment after it is sold for $30,000. Are good, everyone? This is pretty simple. Percent, percent, not percentage, percent. Okay, so this is, in a nutshell, what payback analysis is all about, and you'll get questions, something similar to what we had done in our lecture class, in our tutorial class. And this is where we'll close with the exercise on payback analysis. So what I want you to do next is take a break for five minutes, uh, freshen up your mind, uh, try to grab a drink, okay? And once you come back, we will actually go and try to at least cover up two sets of lecture notes in terms of revision questions, okay? So take five minutes break. Once you come back, we'll continue from thereafter, okay? We'll start off at about 10.51 a.m. Take five, everyone. Thank you.
All right, so let's continue, everyone. So we will first of all begin with week nine lecture notes. So we'll cover up week nine and week 10, both of these uh, lecture slides for our revision questions for today's class. And the reminder of it will be covered up in next week's lecture class. By the way, next week's lecture class will be your very last class for the semester, okay? And your tutorial class, that will be dedicated for you to actually go and attempt your short tests. So question number one, define software as a service. Define software as a service. Question number two, differentiate between traditional systems, differentiate between traditional systems and web-based systems. By the way, I hope that you're able to hear me clearly. Differentiate between traditional systems and web-based systems. Next question, explain the term middleware and its importance. Explain the term middleware and its importance. Explain the term middleware and its importance. Next question. Define web 2.0. Define web 2.0. Next question, describe cloud computing. Describe cloud computing. Next question, what is outsourcing? What is outsourcing? What is outsourcing? Next question. List some issues and concerns. List some issues and concerns. In relation to outsourcing. List some issues and concerns in relations to outsourcing.
Next question. Differentiate between inshore and offshore outsourcing. Differentiate between inshore and offshore outsourcing. Next question. Compare which one is better? Compare which one is a better option? Compare which one is a better option? Colon? In-house development, in-house development, or purchasing a software package. In-house development, or purchasing a software Package. Next question. List down some pros and cons of list down some pros and Cons, C O N S, that means advantages and disadvantages. List down some pros and cons of in house software development. Of in house software development. Full stop. Next question. List down some pros and cons of list down some pros and cons of purchasing a software package of purchasing a software package. Next question. Explain the role of system analysis. Explain the role of system analysis in developing an information system in developing an information system. Next question. What are some tactics what are some tactics? T A C T I C S. What are some tactics? In analyzing cost 
and benefits. What are some tactics in analyzing costs and benefits? Next question, differentiate between logical and physical design. Differentiate between logical and physical design. Differentiate between logical and physical design. Last question for week nine lecture. Describe request for proposal. Describe request for proposal. And request for quotation. Describe request for proposal and request for quotation. Okay, let's move on to week nine, sorry, week 10 lecture, which is on user interface design. And let's go ahead and have some potential questions on this. Question number one, explain human computer interaction. Explain human computer interaction in brackets HCI. Next question, describe rules for successful interface design. Describe rules for successful interface design. Next question, discuss input and output technologies. Discuss input and output technologies. Next question, describe output and input controls. Describe output and input controls. Describe output and input controls. in relation to interface security. In relation to interface security. Next 
Next question. Discuss prototyping. Next question. Discuss prototyping. Next question. What is the major motive of what is the major motive, M O T I V E? What is the major motive of a systems design phase? What is the major motive of the systems? design phase. Next question. What are some common validation rules? What are some common validation rules What are some common validation rules in user interface designs? In user interface designs. Next question. Differentiate between detailed report, comma, differentiate between detailed report, comma, Exception report, E X E, sorry, E X C E P T I O N, exception report, and summary reports. Differentiate between detailed report, exception report, and summary reports. Last question. What are some potential benefits and problems of? What are some potential benefits and problems of? Prototyping. What are some potential benefits and problems of prototyping. Okay, so this finishes up our week 10 lecture. And this is where I will also finish up the class for today. Now we do have week 11, 12, and 13. Okay, two more, two more sets, three more sets of lecture slides. Yeah, we have three more sets of lecture slides yet to complete, and we will follow up with the revision questions in next lecture class. And in the next lecture class, I will also be giving you the outline for our final examination, online-based final examination, okay? So should there be any questions, any queries, you're most welcome to ask now, or you can drop me an email, or you can drop me a message on Moodle. 
and please try your very best to get all the assessments sorted on time. So this is the major reason why I have not given you the short tests last week or either this week so that you can find some time to complete your lecture based quizzes and your major project, which is due on Sunday, 11.59 p.m. and use next week completely to attempt your short test and to attempt your revision questions that I'm giving in. So you have a bit of work to be done till Sunday. And on Monday onwards, you need to start working hard towards your final examination as well. So I wish you all the very best. Please try to manage your time well for the next two to three weeks time. After that, you can relax and chillax, okay? Is there any questions or any queries from anyone? No, if no questions or no queries, thank you very much for joining in and giving in your time. Uh, I appreciate your efforts as well. So, uh, and those of you who will be watching the video, uh, the recorded video later, okay, please ensure that you keep up with your syllabus. Till then, everyone, take care, stay safe. I'll see you all on Monday morning from 12 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.